Hello everyone, I'm here with my beautiful friend Jessica Abbott Williams and we're here to take a tour through some of her art collection at 2700 8th Street. Hi Jessica. Hi Tracy, it's so nice <laughs> to see half of your face. <laughs> I miss the other half. It's so nice to see half of your face too. I want to introduce Jessica as a Bay Area artist. One of the things that really resonates with me with her work is the fact that she has this wonderful, soulful sense that brings organic materials to a depth of zen-like quality that can fit in almost any decor but add that sort of nature intuitiveness into our living spaces when we're all stuck inside this winter. So we'll start with her collection of pottery. So, so these pieces um, are just simple drawings of brown bracken magnolias that were commissioned as part of an exhibit um, at the Kipps Bay Decorator Show House last spring. Back a million years ago when we were allowed to travel and be with other people. <laughs> I was invited um, by the landscape architect Topher Delaney um, to do an exhibit in the garden of the um, Kipps Bay Decorator Show House. And we did a whole wall of these brown bracken magnolia drawings, which was kind of a cool connection because all along the streets of Berkeley, where my art studio is, are these little brown bracken magnolias. And it was one of the features of her garden in New York. So there was a fun cross-country connection there. And so I would just take a, a ceramic pencil and do these simple line drawings every single day for about 30 or 40 days. And then we made a whole wall display of them. In the so Jessica, I would love it if you could talk a little bit about your larger scale art pieces, the color that you used behind you. So generally my work, a lot of my work can be very low color, but I actually I'm a colorist and I love color. It seems like for me, and maybe this is true for all artists, that there's a rhythm. There are times when you work in a labor kind of way and you work slow. And then there's times where the muse strikes and the moment is there and you work fast. So there's two kinds of rhythms to my art. And when, there are times when I just want to show up at the studio and mix colors and make color charts. And I do that often, and I have just countless rolls of canvas that have beautiful color mixing charts where I can go back and reference how to get any color at all that I want. But in the process, I mix a lot of colors that I fall in love with while I'm doing it. And rather than waste those practice color mixing things, I will use them on painting. So I'll have large canvases that I just sort of loosely apply the color to that I've, that I've mixed. Um, and I can layer those and layer those, and then every once in a while you'll find something that inspires you, and then you can go into it with some foreground and some drawing, and then layer back into it later. But, for example, on my way to the studio one day, I saw this beautiful branch of a western redbud in the wintertime with these little ornamental leaves just sort of hanging off of these bare branches. And, of course, that was totally inspiring to me, so I pilfered a small branch from the tree in the garden of a uh, local drugstore and brought it to the studio and just did this simple line drawing and then of course go back in and layer on it. But that's one of the ways that I love to work. One of the things that's really nice when you see these works in person is there's a very great combination of the immediacy where you can see even drips in the canvas combined with this expertly crafted just line quality that's just gentle and fragile and then bold when it needs to be. Little detail of the other side. And do you like to work in the form of diptychs? Or works no, actually I've never seen these two pieces together. And when they decorated the space, they put them side by side and I had never seen them that way. And I think it was a great choice. I really like it. No, I actually do think of groupings. I just hadn't in this case thought of these two as a pair, but I like the way they look. They seem to be kind of in conversation with each other. <laughs> The composition of both is very thoughtful, again, with that somewhat minimalistic approach of less is more, but with a depth to the canvas that feels both well-worked and immediate. Like you're not afraid to take chances, but you know what to keep. Let's go to the bedrooms where you have some other work. So in this room, we have a couple of examples of the Walnut Ink series that I did. I first showed these at St. Supreme Winery in Napa, and you were there for that show. Um, 
And I did a whole section of the gallery just with these pieces. And what I love about them is there's a wonderful relationship with materials that where the materials can inspire, just like the plant can inspire me. Sometimes just discovering a new material, art material can inspire. And I love the relationship I have with the art store that I go to. And here in town, it's Artists and Craftsmen in Berkeley. And the manager and all the employees there are so sweet. And over the years, they know my work, they know what I like, and they'll introduce me to new things. I had been working almost exclusively with Sumi Ink. And they turned me on to this walnut ink, which I love because it's an organic material made from the husks of walnuts. And I love walnuts and walnut trees. And I love that it's this warm, beautiful ink. And I have been working with it on this Reeves printmaking paper, which just holds the ink really beautifully. So another material that my friends at Artists and Craftsmen Art Store in Berkeley introduced me to is a brand new product, which was... Um, iridescent watercolors and black watercolor paper. So I worked on a series of those in a collaboration with a local designer named Erica Tanoff. And she invited me and two other artists, Dharma Strasser McCall and Emily Payne, to collaborate with her on a series. She took some of our paintings and turned them into textiles and it became like her winter line last year. And along with that, we had group um, exhibits of our art at her stores in Marin, Berkeley, and LA. And so these works are inspired by her actually and her design aesthetic, which is very vintage and she does a lot with black. And so these, these kind of old fashioned looking frames are also responding to what I love about the iridescent watercolor, which is that it looks like old cyanotypes or tintypes, kind of references the stilted early photography. But meanwhile, these are really spontaneous gestural plant studies but i like the way that they look like vintage old photography well there's a mastery to that as well you you say that there's a very quick process to getting these onto paper but because of the amount of expertise you have in them they do have a photorealism to them where it's of nature inspired by nature but it becomes something that could be so natural that it fools the eye into believing they're sort of a Trump lawyer. There's a realism to each of the branches. Here we are with Jessica in the gallery space proper. And what I want you all to get a sense of first, before we have Jessica explain some of her art, is how wonderful it all looks and comes together in a big space like this. There's a sense of true being in nature that is hard to come by while we're all stuck at home nowadays. And it really has that sense of trees and foliage surrounding you in a very peaceful, embraceive way. There's also a sense in this space of really being in nature yourself. It's that sort of thing we want our houses to feel like, and even when we get the furnishing right, we don't quite get it. There's a peacefulness and a joy of being within the space. Jessica, maybe you can talk about this large-scale artwork for me? This is one of a series of pieces that was commissioned by the landscape architect Topher Delaney for Kipps Bay Decorator Show House in New York. And the challenge was an interesting one. She was familiar from my work. We've worked together for 30 years probably. And she was really attracted to the work that I did on scrolls of paper. So these are probably eight foot scrolls of paper. And she gave me the challenge of figuring out a way to do that in the garden of the Kipps Bay Decorator Show House, which is kind of an impossible thing to hang 10 eight foot scrolls of paper in the outdoors subjected to the elements it was a real challenge. And so what I ended up doing is I, I did the drawings in my studio on the walls of my studio. And then I took them to a old um, bus terminal studio space in Vallejo where I had 10 large tables set up and I traveled art resin onto all of these and then hung them up from the beams of this old bus station for them to dry suspended so that they wouldn't you know, affix themselves to the tables. It was kind of beautiful actually to see all of these suspended from the ceiling. And what it did was it really protected the paper pretty well. And I had to you know, be prepared for the elements. And when they say with public art, which I've done quite a bit of public art, anything that can happen will happen. <laughs> so 
I was expecting rain and I was expecting wind, but the funny thing is that the day that I was installing it, there were literally gale force winds. It was comical. I wish we had taken a movie of that. These papers flying everywhere. And then there was like, the drainage system from the gutters wasn't really working. And so there was literally deluges of water dumping from the fifth story um, roof of this mansion in New York, dumping, um, deluging water onto these things and somehow they survived and they survived a month in the outdoors this was one that actually didn't get hung so that's why i still have it but um but yeah they survived and uh and it was beautiful <laughs> there's something amazing that the work that you've done into the paper with the different applications of resin and washes and if you can get i'm trying to get a little bit of the sparkle from some of the resin there there's a almost 3D quality when you see this work, and it's done in such an amazing way on such a paper-thin product, and then so simply presented and simply hung just on clips and a board well, on top. Well, it's nice the way the, the art resin soaks through the paper and gives um, this drawing paper kind of a rice paper feel to it, which I like. I like that about it. Not to the presentation in this room has that same technique of simple clips, simple tacking, papers that have a temporary quality but become so masterfully done and then hung in a very simplistic way. We've talked a lot about materials and how the materials can inspire um, the work. Um, and this is kind of a fun series that I worked on. Sometimes, speaking of that last piece, sometimes it can be a little frustrating because I mostly work on paper. There's an advantage to that. It's very portable, but it's also very fragile. And there's kind of an ephemeral quality to paper that can be wonderful and can be also challenging. And so I gave myself the challenge of playing with some works painted on wood and trying to figure out different ways to treat the wood so that it had more of a paper quality to it. And there's something called absorbent ground, which is a common art material. And I've worked with that in the past. But in this case, I did a whole series, which I love, which was household spackle, and I mixed it with inks. And I would just make these giant vats of colored spackle, which were so beautiful to work with. And then I would trowel them on and sand them and trowel and sand. And then I could work with these inks directly onto these wooden boards, which was really satisfying. In this case, I worked with some iridescent ink um, and some not iridescent ink using some branches of bay laurels from my neighborhood. Beautiful. I wish I could all bring you into this space, but hopefully you'll get a little sense of it during COVID and let you escape a little bit into her art world. This is a piece that was so beloved by the seller of this space that we purchased it for her as a gift. So it will live on past this condo. <laughs> If any of you are interested in any of Jessica's beautiful work, then just DM me and I can put you in contact with her. Because she has, is so prolific and because there is such a, a quantity of work that she has, there's much more that I can't show you in this space. And it also, in my opinion, for such an established artist, makes it quite reasonably priced. So don't think you can't have one of these in your own home. Here's just a simple drawing that I love. It almost has a more graphic element than the others. Is there anything else, Jessica, that you would like to talk about in your space? Uh, it's just been such a joy working with you. It's such a weird time, particularly as an artist, it's kind of wonderful because it allows all of us as artists to kind of really tap into the introverted part of ourselves and our process, which has been wonderful to have an excuse to kind of shut the world out. Um, but at the same time, there's, to me, the artistic process is, the work of art is the moment where my artistic process meets the beginning of the viewer's artistic, creative reception of the work. And that's largely lost right now. So this is a great time for making, but not really necessarily a great time for viewing art. Um, so it's just been such a pleasure, as quiet as the world is right now, to have all these walls to show my work. And so thank you for that. You're welcome. It was wonderful talking with you. Thank you for giving everybody your time today. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the weekend.